Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here is my watch list for February 25th. All right, uh, so there are a lot of tickers in play tonight, and um, I actually had quite a tough time trying to whittle it down. Um, I have quite a long list, but let's take a look at the futures first. I mean, we have a gap up over here. Uh, we have reached the 2800s um, ever so slightly. And then it dipped and held um, its highs from or its closing price from uh, Friday. And then now it's starting to ramp back up. So it's actually looking pretty bullish. It's gapping up just ever so slightly. Uh, that relates to the SPY right here, the SPY. Um, we are getting into a spot where it's going to be pretty choppy in my opinion. It's not going to be like a breakthrough breakout unless it can get over 281. I mean, we are a little bit overextended. We did close very strong and we are gapping up a little bit. So it really depends if it uh, gets back, if it gets above uh, 280 tomorrow and if it holds, right? Uh, so right now we are gapping up and we are around around this area right here. So I want to see a little bit more of a gap up and then dip at the open to hold um, from 280 and then we could rip from there. Now, with that said, uh, this to me looks like a strong market trend, uh, in my opinion. So it's actually tougher to short stocks in the strong market. Um, I'm not saying there aren't opportunities out there, but um, the first, the easy plays tomorrow, uh, I'll be looking for uh, longs. Okay, so first up, I mean, we have Roku here, which ran stupid on its uh, earnings, right? But here's the thing, I mean, a lot of shorts got, uh, got squeezed out on Friday and a lot of people I know personally got hammered and got crushed trying to short this monster. Now, I understand why they shorted it because the, the stock was very overextended, right? Um, however, given the market conditions of it uh, being pretty bullish, even though uh, we have like a volume compression, right? Um, it's slowly grinding up. It's not a parabolic push. So given the, the healthy market condition right now and the positive earnings catalyst, and then we have a breakout, right? Um, we were looking at resistance areas of 56 and then uh, the next area at 59, right? Like a key resistance. We actually breached that um, in the morning right here when once we breach this level here around the 59 area this chart was no longer uh, a short in my opinion it was uh, basically squeezy squeezy all the long-term shorts getting squeezed out right um some people might have jumped in and bought on on this dip right here some people might have jumped in and bought on this dip i mean we have a very concise infliction point here at 57.5 right and then it broke out of 60 but here again is a pretty concise infliction point as well so uh, i'm gonna be looking for both ways because uh, we are running into 65 which is a key psychological whole number and uh pretty much um uh, a, a pretty solid resistance level, right? So I, I need to judge from there whether the stock will run again tomorrow or not. I mean, it's coming into some daily chart resistance right here. And uh, if we are gapping up and over this area tomorrow, I mean, let's check this bar. Okay, 6530s. If we are gapping up and over the 6530s, and if it holds the 65, I do believe that the stock can still run, uh, especially with it being so strong on Friday. Uh, I bet you a lot of long-term shorts and a lot of short sellers are looking at this as a, a very overextended type of play, and they're all looking for that short. Um, and to be quite honest, a lot of short sellers are very stubborn, right? They don't uh, they see something up and overextended and they just want to short it. Just because something up and overextended does not mean it's an automatic short, right? So um, they will get stubborn and try to hammer this in before the backside. Uh, 
And when I say backside, I don't mean just the intraday backside. I mean the daily chart backside, right? So uh, I do think um, if it keeps running, it's going to keep uh, rotating shares and getting overcrowded and shorts are going to try to pile in and get squeezed. So trap and squeeze, trap and squeeze. And that is definitely a possibility, right? Um, some key support areas I want to watch here is a 62.50. Okay, so tomorrow I do anticipate a dip out the gates to hold 62.50 and 63 as well. So if I put in 63 right here, okay, um, let's take a look at 63 on here on the five minute chart. I mean, 62.50 is very concise, but 63, if you put this horizontal support line right here you can see how it based off based off and then reclaim uh late day so we have a very clear floor here if the stock trades under or breaches this support level and stays under it the keyword being it stays under the 63 then i'm gonna go ahead and switch my long bias and and be like okay it's a profit taking day and I think it's a short day, and then I'll try to ride it down to uh, six fifty seven fifties. But uh, of course, I'll be looking at sixty first. So this is a key support area as well because it's a key psychological whole number, right? So we have a lot of support areas that we can watch for. So I still don't really like the shorting play unless it gets up really quickly and overextended. Here's the thing, um, if 65 breaches and hold, right, uh, I do think the stock can magnet up to 70s right here, uh, this daily chart resistance. It's definitely doable, okay? Uh, I mean, the stock ran how many points uh, on Friday? Like from, what, 55 to, it ran nine points. So another five points for it to run, definitely doable, um, especially with uh, a lot of these shorts uh, getting scared shitless now. If this breaches again, then it's gonna, it's gonna blow, blow up and uh, rock it up into the 70s. From there, I might look for a short though. So it is a tad overextended, but uh, give it one more day. If it gaps down huge though, then then I'm gonna look for a retest of the highs and then uh, short it back down. Uh, but I highly doubt it's gonna gap down huge because it's really closing really strong and held a lot of its gains. Plus we got the futures coming up and the SPY overall. The overall market condition is bullish. So I actually like it for a gap up. Uh, that's my take on Roku. It's definitely a main play for me. Um, it's going to be my number one, number one watch. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Zillow. So Zillow uh, popped on a call from Citron Research. Okay, Andrew left calling it for a target price of seventy. Um, now that's pretty stretching it, right? But on the intraday, uh, sorry, on the daily chart, we have key resistance here at the forty-five mark as well as a 200 SMA, right? So let me zoom in right here. 200 SMA, we have uh, the 45. Um, we know Andrew Leff has already bought it. He's probably bought, bought it around this area. And uh, he puts out that tweet, probably manipulating the market to buy some more so he can sell into it, right? Um, right now, I'm looking at 43 level. I mean, looking at this 43 level, you can see uh, it, Basically flat line throughout the whole afternoon from after after uh, from from noon from lunch right so this is a key support area now I'm gonna watch for 43 I'm expecting it to dip out the gates and if it holds 43 then it's a long up to 45 maybe beyond it might get a second day due to market conditions being bullish right but uh, and and I wouldn't be surprised if it comes all the way up to this 4750 area here. Okay. So um get a look for that dip to hold 43 to continue the bullish bias. If it snaps 43 and stays under 43, then it's uh 
it, I'm gonna short it. I'm gonna look for uh, an entry to short it, and um, from there probably bring it back down to what forty two five, maybe even. Let's see here, forty two and forty, right? Um, it's not just the forty three though. I mean, looking at this, we have uh, all the way down to forty two eighty as a support zone so i guess you can see it a little better here Ooh, excuse me on the on the five minute chart 42.80 is uh where this candle topped out here right so let's see now 42.85 area so we have a very concise support zone i apologize if i'm uh talking a little slower today and i sound a little off because it is uh 2 a.m. and I am I did work a back-to-back 12-hour -back shift so I'm pretty tired right now so but that's basically my take on Zillow okay so a dip a hold would be a long a pop uh, anticipating a gap up right if it gaps up and holds above 45 it's still a long in my opinion and it might run a couple more points right uh, so that's another play I will be watching Next up is AMRN. Okay, so this stock ran up on a rumor of a buyout rumor, basically a takeover rumor by uh, Novartis NVS. And it's just a rumor, right? But um, people, are, people seem to like it. Now, what I'm looking at right now is uh, probably the test of the highs here at the 2050. <sighs> Excuse me. So 2050. Uh, it did close pretty strong, so um, and I'm anticipating a little pop out the gates. Uh, at the end of Friday, it started selling off at around the power hour, right? And then it, nobody really, really covered yet, right? I mean, there is a little bit of cover here, a little bit of cover pop. So I do anticipate, I mean, this is a double top, so I do anticipate these shorts to... Uh, cover some more at the open and cause the stock to pop so we'll be watching twenty dollars and fifty cents i want to take a look here at uh, the next resistance level what i can get from here um 21 looks pretty pretty clean yeah 21 looks pretty clean so i'll be marking off 21 as well if it pops out the gates i'll be looking for a short around these two areas um simply because the callus is just a rumor right and i don't think this rumor will will last too long um i'm definitely going to check the news tomorrow on this on this ticker so uh keep an eye out for that uh and finally my fourth main watch will be uh wayfair <clears throat> on positive earnings catalyst and then it ran as well um this is a uh, pretty similar to roku now the stock closed uh selling off a little bit and then um it didn't do much at late day so right now we're in a position where we have to watch the pre-market and the opening to decide where the stocks want to go right uh Currently, we're sitting at a very key psychological number of 150. So, um, above or below 150, we'll have to, we'll, we'll, I will make a bias from there. Just marking off some resistance area. I mean, we got 155. We got the high of day at 156 and change, right? Uh, let me see here. High of day 156.78, right? Uh, we also have. Uh, one fifty two fifty. Okay, one fifty two fifty is pretty key here. I mean, if you look at this intraday level, it's right there where it bounced off of, and then it finally snapped. It's here where it kind of bounced and rejected here, and then in the morning, um, it topped out at around this area. So this one two uh one fifty two fifty very key area. I am if a pop comes tomorrow, um. I'll be looking for this area to uh, for for rejection signal, if not uh, the one fifty one fifty five, right? So uh, we'll take a look at that from there. I mean, if I were to short it for a profit taking day, I don't think it can come down too much. 
Let's see. Where's the next level? I mean, let's try for U right here. Yeah, 146 and change. I mean, this candle is uh, pretty nice, but it doesn't really have volume. Let me see. Yeah, 145, 146 and change. So if I short it, it's going to be a quick scalp. Uh, target area 146 and then if that snaps then 145 142 and a half and then 140 okay so that's pretty much my main watch the four tickers um, I do have some stickers I want to put on the side watch though and I'll check on them throughout the day so NKTR on my previous watch list I did say a look for rejection at 41 and then anticipate a snap of 40. Now, 40 hasn't snapped yet, but um, it did reject 41. So we have a very concise resistance area here, right? 200 SMA on five minute chart. I'm still looking uh, for this 40 to snap, right? Um, if it cover pops tomorrow, then we do have a pretty nice resistance at the 4050, okay? Uh, draw a little horizontal line across here. We got 4070s as well. So I do like that. I'm going to watch for that rejection and then the snap. Eventually, uh, if this 40 gives way, then I, I definitely think it's going to trigger some stop losses here, right? Uh, we'll see. So that's on side watch. Uh, NVIDIA is also on side watch. This could actually have this, this ticker actually has potential to make it on the main watch, right? Because uh, we see a very concise resistance getting bumping its head. The stock keep bumping its head on uh, the 160 here. And given the overall uh, market condition, it looks like it wants to break out. And if it does, a lot of shorts piled in uh, on these few days ever since the earnings, right? So if it does break out this 160 um, and starts holding, then the stock could squeeze. I mean, we have formed the higher low on Friday, and there is actually a pretty concise uptrend line that we can draw, right? So something like that, right? So uh, to me, it looks like a breakout chart. We'll have to gauge it from the 160 and beyond. If it breaks out over 160 and hold, then it's a long. However, if it uh, rejects 160, then it's a short. Bring it back down to the 157.50 area here or the 158. We have a pretty key range we can play off of, right? So uh, you can just play this range, watch the stock bounce here around the 58 to the 60s area. So that's a nice watch. Another chart uh, that's looking uh, pretty clean and bullish in my opinion. Uh, SQ, um, they're announcing earnings this week um, in the middle of the week. So I, I don't, I haven't checked the exact date yet, but looking at this chart, this is very bullish in my opinion. After hours, you got a few ticks um, uh, going up as well. So on this daily chart though, I mean, it looks like it's about to break out the 76 area. Okay. So uh, it actually broke out a little bit but it hasn't tested yet. So 76 is a very key area to watch for. I am expecting the gap up. The stock does follow the SPY a little bit. So expect that gap up, right? And then uh, dip out the gates. If it holds 76, it's definitely a long. And then uh, for the prior two days, we got shorts piled in here. So these shorts are gonna feel some pain tomorrow. And uh, I like it for the run, maybe up to 77. So there is at least a point here and perhaps even more um, test these highs around the 78 area. So SQ, nice little side watch. Same deal with Goose, Canada Goose here, G-O-O-S. This is a side watch as well. So it has broken out, right? Um, we have, we have uh, the 54 breakout. So uh, depending on what it does at the 55 area, because we are over the 55 as well right here. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to watch for dip to hold 55 and then the long and then uh, see if it can have a second day continuation. But it is pretty overextended right now. It does need to pull back a little. Um, let's see. 55. 
right here, I mean, as long as this 5450s, 5460s area holds, right? My bias is still bullish on it. Okay, but uh, out the gates at the open, I will be watching for dips, right? So looking at these areas right here, watch for dips to hold, okay? Um, until it trades under these areas, then uh, I, I don't want to short it just yet, given the market condition. So that's basically um, what I have for you guys tonight. And once again, I apologize that I sound a little tired. Uh, I've been yawning and I talk a little monotone and slow today. Um, if you'd like, I mean, you can always, uh, this one trick that I do is uh, I watch my own videos in 1.25 times speed if not one and a half times speed. So that will make it a little bit less painful, but uh, the information is definitely good. Make sure you like uh, the video and subscribe. And uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be, I'm, I'm gonna be planning to uh, record a live trading session. And tomorrow's uh, live trading session, I actually have uh, a lot I wanna talk about. Throughout the whole weekend, I had a lot of ideas in my mind that I never had time to make a video yet, so I guess I'll lump everything in tomorrow on my live trading video. Anyways, you guys have a great evening. I'll see you guys all bright and early in a few hours. Ciao.